My name is Cheryl Knott, and I'm an associate professor of anthropology at Boston University. I work in Borneo, on the island of Borneo in Indonesia, in the site called Gunampalo National Park, and I've been working there for about 18 years now, studying wild orangutans. In Borneo, orangutans are endangered, and in Sumatra, they're critically endangered, so there are not very many of them left. One of the reasons why I wanted to go out and study orangutans is I wanted to see if some aspects of their reproduction were similar to what we knew about in humans. So in humans, we know that if you're you know, losing weight, that your hormones will go down and that you have a lower um, probability of conception. So I wanted to see if that was similar in orangutans and other apes. And I found that that was true, that during periods of high fruit, they had higher hormonal levels compared to periods of low fruit when their hormonal levels went down. And that showed us they had the same mechanisms that humans have, which tells us that this was probably something that was an important mechanism during human evolution, that's something that they share uh, in common with humans. So when we fall orangutans, we, we get there, you know, when they wake up at 5 a.m., which means maybe getting up 3.34 in the morning, walking in the dark to their sleeping site, uh, their nest, and, you know, wait until they wake up. And then it, it can be quite, you know, difficult physically. You know, they may decide to cross a river, you know, there in the trees, and they can cross over quite easily, but we might have to scramble over, you know, a pretty big flowing river with, you know, the rocks, and then scramble up the side of a cliff to follow them. So, can, you know, there can be challenges. They might not often go really far, but the terrain they can travel over can be quite difficult. They might make a nest at late at night, you know, after the, even after the sun's gone down sometimes. So you need some skills to uh, navigate your way to the forest. Over the years, we've seen increasing encroachment of people, primarily illegal loggers, inside the national park. So when I first started going there, we didn't really see any kind of illegal logging. And over the years, we saw more and more encroachment to the point where you could eventually walk to the study site in about five or six hours versus having to take you know, a boat um, up to the, to the rainforest. The kind of peripheral areas, outer areas, have become smaller and smaller as people have converted those to rice fields and have cut those down for um, illegal logs. The main core area where our study area is has actually been pretty well preserved, although there have been a few kind of encroachments in some of the sort of outlying areas, but um, pretty much it's, it's remained intact. But there's, it means though that the, the orangutans are more compressed into a smaller area and that a lot of the animals in these areas that are now no longer rainforest either died or moved to some other area. We realized that we needed to reach out to the community and to the villagers and educate people about why it was important to preserve the rainforest and, and to help protect uh, orangutans and other species that live there. And we started with uh, field trips to the national park where we bring students to the study site actually. Most of them had never seen a wild orangutan despite living in the villages surrounding that area um, and really didn't know much about them. Probably most primatologists around the world, because we're studying animals over the long term, we there's a lot of sort of work with local communities to help protect and preserve those habitats and those animals. So I think it's really you know, an important aspect of um, kind of modern, uh, you know, primatology or primate studies is sort of you know reaching out, working on conservation with with local people as well as doing your research.